Okay, we were still on number two, doing the limits for G. Uh, let's go move to number 14 right now. Number 14 is asking you to find the limit as X approaches negative one. What's happening at negative one? We found an asymptote at negative four, a hole at five, which means negative one is an ordinary Joe Schmo location. And to find the limit at an ordinary dot, you just plug the X value into the equation. Which equation? You can use the original, but you might as well use the simplified holeless one. It's a lot easier to work with. So negative one right there gives you one minus four plus three. Negative one right there gives you three. It looks like zero over three. Zero over three is zero. That was the answer to 14. Now the ones we skipped. We skipped six and seven. This is asking you to find the limit as x approaches negative four coming from the right. Now negative four was an asymptote. We know the limit at an asymptote is does not exist, Oops. which is the answer to eight. However, coming from the left and coming from the right, which is what six and seven is asking you to do, has a limit. If you were to take a look at the graph, which I've put on my calculator here conveniently, graphed it from negative 10 to 10, Coming from the right, you can see, oh, it's going to shoot up that asymptote. So coming from the right, it's headed up forever. Coming from the left, you can see a little bit of it. It comes here and shoots down. It's headed down forever. So that's what we're looking for on 6 and 7. Coming from the right, we said it was headed up. That's positive infinity. Coming from the left, it was negative infinity. In order to answer those right now, we used our graphing calculator. Okay, number three, we should have time to get three done. We need to figure out if x plus three is in that numerator. If it is, we found a hole. If it isn't in there, then we found an asymptote. So we do long division with our x plus three. And it was close, but we have a remainder of negative 24. Because we have a remainder, x plus 3 does not factor out of that numerator. And if it doesn't factor out of the numerator and it stays in the denominator, we found an asymptote. What x value makes this 0? Negative 3 does. So no holes. That's okay. We go down below and we find the limits for the h's. 10 says find the limit as x approaches negative 3. Negative 3 is the asymptote we just found. And the limit at an asymptote does not exist. That was friendly. K, K. Let's do 15. The limit as x approaches 1. 1 is not the asymptote, which means it's a Joe Schmo. To find the limit at an ordinary dot, you plug that x value into the equation. We don't have a simplified equation, so we just plug 1 in for all the x's in the original equation. If we were doing it by hand, we would have 1 plus 2 plus 1 minus 12 over 4. So negative 8 over 4 is negative 2. And that concludes all the h's. If we do the k's now, we can see that the denominator factors to x minus 2 and an x plus 2. Your job is to figure out if either of those or both are in that numerator. So we do some polynomial division, choose one. Doesn't matter which one you choose. Let's see if we can get no remainder. I'm running out of room. Poor planning. Negative six. I completely ran out of room. Negative. 
this should be an X. Well, believe it or not, I squeezed it in here, but I got no remainder. Now, here's going to be a major, major time saver for you on your final exam. I'm going to write down what I got here. This is crucial to remember. This x plus 2 canceled because we got no remainder there. Sorry about that. So we just found that there is a hole at whatever x value makes this 0, in this case, negative 2. Your next job is to figure out whether or not x minus 2 is in that numerator. Please do not go back to the original numerator. Once you remove a hole from the equation, then don't go back to the original numerator for the other binomial. You want to figure out if x minus 2 is in now this part. You will have a very stressful time if you forget that. So, let's try to find some room here on our paper. Figure out if x minus 2 is in the remaining numerator, starting with x to the fourth. And it is. And since it does divide into that top evenly, we found another hole. And that hole would be at positive 2. So we have two holes and no asymptotes for number 4. The equation that's left over now after you cross off the two holes is this part right here. Which is x cubed minus 10x plus 3. This is the original equation with the holes taken out. Simplified out. That's important because that's a lot friendlier to use than that original equation. So, number 11 and number 12 on your limits. They're asking you to find the limit at 2 and negative 2. And 2 and negative 2 are the holes. To find the limit at a hole, you plug the x value into the equation with the holes taken out. So you plug 2 into that guy. Now what you need to learn from this is finding the limit at a hole, in this case holes, is the exact same method as finding the limit at a Joe Schmo. All you do is plug the x value into the equation with the hole taken out. So now you just need to remember Joe Schmo's and holes, their limits are found the exact same way, plugging it into the simplified equation. So plugging 2 into this equation will give you 8 minus 20 which is negative 12 plus 3, negative 9. Plug negative 2 into this guy, will give you negative 8 plus 20, which is 12 plus 3 is 15. And plugging negative 1 into this guy will give you negative 1 plus 10, which is 9 plus 3 is 12. And that concludes the front side.